On today's episode, news, the ride or die segment. We break down the Thursday night matchup and the Foot Clan. We've got some trust issues with some players, so we break those down. Make sure you subscribe to this channel, like the video, and enjoy. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Hi, this is Eric Dickerson, NFL Hall of Famer, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast for Wednesday, October 19th. Welcome one and all. Jason Moore, Mike Wright, Andy Holloway, and the Deucers. They all showed up for work today. Always a blessing when when they all show up. Yeah, it makes me happy. And uh, Kyle is rocking the, what at least to me seems like the more vintage Falcons hat cap. Celebrating three and three. Yeah, I mean, that's a good reason. I mean, they, we thought oh, and player six. of the week, Marcus Mariota. Oh, he was. was. He? Yeah. Oh, come on. Yeah. How embarrassing is that, NFL? <laughs> when I went and looked, like every time I turned my head towards that game, Kyle, I only saw one thing. It was a square man named Caleb Huntley running into the back of his offensive line. Oh, Tyler Algier was able to do that well, many times as well. Well, this is what I'm saying. Like when, Then I look at the box score. To me, it was Caleb Huntley got over 400 carries in that game, and that's yeah. how they won. Right. But then I went and looked, and he's got like six fantasy points, and then I see Tyler Algier had like 57% of the snaps. How are they winning? How are you winning? There's a plan. I have no idea. <laughs> no, no clue. Do you love you. Arthur because he's accomplishing these goals for you? I, he's establishing a culture, which I respect, but I don't want us to win right now. God, goodness gracious. Yeah, I, I can't imagine that I would be happy with – if if that was my head coach, I would be very, very un- Well, let's just start unhappy. thinking about this, though, for a minute, Kyle, because Carolina, they're a dumpster fire. They're gone. Yeah. Delete they're at, them. They're, they've actually gone down into AAA. They are not in the division any longer. Uh, New Orleans, they've got a lot of problems. Those problems are primarily called injuries. Um, they don't have players. Well, and starting quarterback is a question mark rest of season no matter who it is. Right. Uh, partially because of he uh, four broken bones in the uh, presumed starters back. You have, I think they just lost an offensive tackle to injury just now. Uh, uh, it was a left guard. Yeah. Oh, left guard. Pete. Yes. Um, and then you've got no Michael Thomas. You've got no... Jarvis Landry. Well, I, I just there's questions, yeah. and then and then Tom Brady is stressed out in Tampa. I think this is your division. I think you're going to the playoffs, Kyle. It was supposed to be our division like two years from now, so this is ahead of the plan. But I'm wow, is, whatever. Is this where we tune in on Sunday and Tom Brady's on the sideline just with a with a with, with like a ribeye or a tomahawk, <laughs> and he's just just going to town on a big piece of meat. Like, is, is, this, he, is this some comment about him normally eating plants? Yeah, well, he's completely plant-based. What I'm saying is this stress level got into him so much that he just – we turn around, and he's, like, on the carnivore diet. Yeah. He's like, I'm out. Just eating a Big Mac. Yeah. Just like this. Is just, I'm done with all this. That's when you know things have gone downhill completely. Okay. I'll be watching. Uh, that Yeah. So, it's just crazy. Marcus Mariota, I did not realize he was the Offensive Player of the Week. Congratulations. All right, ride or die on today's show. Some news to talk about in the fantasy world. Uh, bye weeks are hitting hard. I mean, I yeah, man. when we were rolling in here today, Jason was talking about his team that has been laid bare in some ways, and then, you know, we were also talking about the inverse. Sometimes you are the player that has your players, and your opponent is decimated. Yeah, we've got uh, a couple division mates in our division, Andy, that get free Ws uh, this week. Uh, because they're playing a team that has nobody. And and you might be one of those teams where it's like, look, you have to drop guys in certain situations that you would not drop because you have to start a roster. Like, that should be, you know, if, if you're questioning, like, oh, through bye weeks, 
should I just play this, you know, this player on buy so that I don't have to drop someone, take the zero? Uh, we here at the Fantasy Footballers stand opposed to that, I presume, all three of us. I mean, if, if it's insane, if it's like, you know, you can't drop a top tier player. No, but then you got to go make a trade. I agree. Sure. Uh, you got to figure it out. You, you can't start a zero because uh, there are no real free wins. I mean, you can you can sneak something. Uh, an injury can happen. Um, you can certainly win even when it seems like you're going to lose and vice versa. Uh, we got mailbag on the show. We're going to talk about it. The current Megalobowl leader right now, still the shark from Jaws 3D is 12-0. and 0. Wow. You cannot stop. The shark from Jaws 3D. 999 points. Basically 1,000 points. That is insane. And so I have looked up his roster for everyone curious. The shark. The shark from Jaws 3D has Patrick Mahomes at quarterback, at running back. You're talking about Nicholas Chubb. Nicholas. Miles Sanders and Josh Jacobs as his main guys. But he's got some backups like Khalil Herbert that I assume played during that big blow-up week. Cooper Cup, Tyreek Hill, but he's also making good uh, managerial moves because I see TJ Hawkinson on the bench because he was on by. Who oh, he, what a great move. Who did he throw in? <laughs> Mike Gesicki. Okay, that works. Who got two touchdowns. Yeah. The golden touch. Yeah. I, I have wondered, uh, and by I have wondered, it was this morning that I wondered this. That's in the past, so uh, it is wondered. I think Gesicki might be a good stash. Because the trade deadline is less than two weeks away. And I think there's a fairly good chance he gets moved. And we have seen, you know, Zach Ertz in the middle of the season was a transaction that turned into a starter. If a team actually is willing to invest in Mike Gesicki, he could be used somewhere. And he, he's a good player. He's just not part of the offensive structure for Mike McDaniel. And even as not a part of the structure, he scored twice last week. Yeah, well, that, that reminds me. He actually trended way up this past week was like the involvement over the last few weeks has gone up last week. He was, he ran a bunch of routes and it, perhaps this is this coincide with, you know, Jalen Waddle is not a hundred percent and he's still not a hundred percent. Yeah. That, that reminds me, there was a player we didn't mention on yesterday's waiver episode that we should bring up for similar uh, circumstances, which is Deonta Foreman should just be stashed right now. There's all the yeah, rumors sure. about, look, they're shopping Christian McCaffrey. Seems like he might be, you know, if, if we knew Christian McCaffrey was injured and he's gone for the season, there'd be a mad dash. Even though Deonta Foreman is not going to, you know, be a superstar fantasy player, he would be a starting running back for yep. an NFL franchise. Yeah, so, Chuba would get some uh, Mike Boone level interest as well. Yep. So grab those guys and stash them now just in c case of a trade ski. Yeah. I, you know, you don't see a lot of trades middle of the season, but there are some names floating around. You had the Travis Kelsey transaction where they, they front-loaded his uh, contract, cleared up some cap space to do something. Like, I don't know if you saw the interview. Oh, mm -hmm. I saw it. But, you know, they're rumoring Odell Beckham. There there are other players out there, and they need help at wide receiver. So, very interesting stuff. Maybe we'll have some trades to talk about soon. A reminder, everybody out there, thank you for tuning in. The community, you can find them at jointhefoot.com. You'll get a bonus weekly episode of the show. Bonus. You'll get a bunch of premium perks, resources, mm, tools, premium. a community of almost 30,000 now on uh, Discord. And uh, we've got the game day alerts over there. There's just a lot of resources available to you as you make the push for the playoffs. Yep. All the schedule adjusted metrics that we've been talking about that people have been like, where can I find these? Those are now out. They are up on the website uh, for all the Foot Clan to use. Now you, Jason, you would like a schedule adjusted win loss record in our league of record. Oh my goodness. <laughs> would I, I am. I'm a, you're I, raging a little I bit. I am actually really purposely trying to put a lid on it i'm trying my best and i'm failing obviously let me yeah ask i mean when the you, steam builds up you have to let it out let's, i want to ask you a question is mm -hmm. that because your team has scored the most points in the league yes yes it has and you also you've got you have the double crown right now yeah uh, yeah you have the most points uh -huh. and yet the most points have been scored against you compared to the rest of the that league. is also true so you with the most points scored in the league through six weeks, your record is three and three, mm. five hundred. Mm. Wow, you must be really. Disappointed. I'm one game out from you. Yeah, <laughs> and there's two teams in our division that 
I think we could say aren't good. And they are both about to be four and three. And I'm really not happy about that. <laughs> I'm tilting. So does this mean, I mean, you've, you've rebelled uh, in anger at this circumstance. I believe some of the quotes coming from you were fantasy football is stupid. Well, yeah, it totally is. Which I mean, we do know. We, has a, we anyone all, who, we all if, anyone to that. who has played fantasy football knows how awful fantasy football is <laughs> and how awesome it is. I'll give I mean, it. Oh, sorry. A quick shout out to my buddy Zach in our in my home league. He's got the highest, uh, most points in our league, and he's one in five. Come oh, on! What a loser! Hey, hey, just be better, Zach. Does that make you feel be any better, better Jason? <laughs> that doesn't make me feel any better at all. Um, it, I mean, I guess misery loves company, so that's that's fine. But it, it this experience definitely makes me. At the same time, while we're playing in the Mega Bowl, where we are playing against the league median. I am loving that. I, I think well, it is really nice yeah, to have you're, that. You're winning in that league. And, and a part of it is there, there's another solution. Just stop tracking points scored over the course of the season. Stop showing it in the standings so you don't have to think that that automatically means you should be undefeated. Well, it's an important tiebreaker in most he would, leagues. He would know. You're telling no, me that? I, 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 I would go back and I would add it up for every single yes. team in the league and have to do the math myself. I mean, just to play like the devil's advocate conversation here on the show, we've got we've got time. You know, we yeah, talk but, about fantasy. Yeah, it's it's difficult because it's like I wish there was a world where it was like. You get a point for a win, and you get half a point for the league median. Like, it wasn't a one-to-one -one balance in that system. And the other part is it's like total points scored. You can score 168 points one week, right? You can have a monster week. You win going away. And that's going to distort your totals, right? And then you also have players that your team gets better over time. We have a guy in our league who the first three weeks, his team looked like the worst in the league, snuck a couple wins. His team looks really good now, not a high-point scoring team. Um, I just think it's a hard thing to broad brush over the course of the year. And all respect to your team should be better than three and three, mostly because you should have beat me, but you didn't. And uh, yeah, and and Papa Josh, who I lost to by zero point two points. Oh my gosh, I hate fantasy football. <laughs> it's the worst. Are we moving on? Yeah, let's move on. Ride or die, presented by Chevrolet. Well, this should make you happy, Jason. You went, uh, you and Mike went three and zero. Ooh, vroom vroom. In, in ride or die, I went a pathetic two for three. Oh man, you uh, got one wrong. I did, and uh, here we go. Let's hear our week seven ride or die predictions. Brooksy, give us the first one. All right, guys. Damian Fierce coming off the bye week at the Raiders. Well, you have ninety total yards. Yep. Yeah, I, I I saw this in the dock earlier, and, and I pre knew this okay. line's going to have to move up. Let's bump it up because that's a triple ride. Where are we setting it? It's going to triple digits. We're starting at a hundred because I'm buying a hundred, so a hundred total all purpose yards. I will buy one hundred. No, I'm not going to buy that. Oh crap! Okay, so we found the line. Yeah, we'll we go, found the line. We'll go with a hundred total total yards. I will. I'll die. I will also be riding okay. with Damien. Okay. We're riding. Uh, now, the Raiders yes. is the matchup. They're obviously, they have not been a great defense. They have been pretty good against running backs. So it's um, it's one of those where the schedule does not look great for Damian Pierce. But when Damian Pierce is just the centerpiece of the offense, I think when they're up, when they're down, easy or difficult, they're just going to keep riding. All right. So uh, what did you do, Mike? I'm going to ride. Okay. Romeo Dobbs at Washington. Brooks, what's the line here? Is it going to get to double-digit fantasy points and half PPR scoring? No. Die. He's, oh, he's die. only done it twice this year. Week three and week four, it looked like Romeo Dobbs was a breakout sensation rookie about to be something special. The last two weeks have been bad, not just for Romeo Dobbs, but for the Green Bay Packers, who went across the sea. Sands, the Lazard King. He's he's the, doing just fine. The Lazard King has been yes. fine in those matchups. Uh, we had a Randall Cobb game. Uh, we had a uh, Robert Tunyon game. I'm still buying this, though. 
because Randall Cobb is injured. He is going to be gone, and Dobbs has been on the field running the routes, and I just don't believe that Aaron Rodgers is going to not figure, you know, his his relax comment a couple years ago. Right. He's going to figure out how to not be putrid. They've just been so bad, and I think Dobbs is a big part of that. The matchup against Washington, they are the worst of the worst against wide receivers. With Cobb gone, I, w I will ride on Romeo Dobbs's shoulders, and he's in my league of record uh, team this week because of bye weeks. So come uh -huh. on, uh -huh. come on, Romeo. Uh -huh. okay. Romeo, okay. where for our thou? Okay, Romeo. Washington thirty second against wide receivers schedule adjusted. So I will ride. Okay, yeah, I think this is. Uh, this we'll is be talking about it later this week. This is going to be a very good week for Aaron Jones, I believe, okay. against Washington and uh, Alan Lazard included. Oh yeah, I think he, he'll be good. He's the he's the Lazard king. Tom Brady, Brooks, what's the oh. line here? Our last ride or die. Will he be a top eight quarterback at Carolina? Top eight, huh? That's a good line right there. And That's... a reminder of the, the bye week quarterbacks, Josh Allen, Jalen Hurts, Kirk Cousins, Matthew Stafford. Yeah. That's well, okay, that is, that's a good reminder. We will be talking about him later this week as oh, well. Oh, will we? Yeah, so uh, we'll I've, see I, we've looked ahead. I have to ride on this one. I do think he'll be a top eight quarterback. Sneak it in there. Right now, he's my quarterback seven on the week. Yeah, I mean, are we all going to ride? Do we need to change the line? Let's change it. All right, top six quarterback. Oh, I just said he was my quarterback seven. Who's buying top six? <laughs> I'm not. I will ride. Okay. Okay, I'm die. Thomas Brady is currently my quarterback five at the time of this recording. I will die as well. So, Mike, we have our difference. And ironically, it will come with my start of the week at quarterback. Hmm. He has been. Uh, you actually just slide him on over. Yeah. Over well, here. Just, uh, another trade. <laughs> His consensus ranking right now is six on the week. So I have him at eight, Mike at five, Jason at six. And, um, you know, if the ride or die was, will he get really angry on the sideline? I would ride. Oh, yeah. yeah that's right. It, it, Tom Brady has not been great uh, for fantasy football this season. But Evans, good to go. And the last week, the Chris Godwin out there a ton, getting a huge target percentage. It looks like Chris Godwin is back, really back this time. Can we can we at least talk about it? We're going into week seven, right? And it's not been smooth sailing for Tampa. Can we talk about whether or not this is on Brady? Sure. Because it will be eventually. Like at some point, if he continues to play football, he won't do it forever at the same level. You know, there was a good portion of last week he was completing, you know, under 50% of his passes in the game. Rob Gronkowski's not a part of this offense. Oh, busted. Do you? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's me, Rob uh, Gronkowski. For, for those wondering, uh, that was a uh, callback to a USAA commercial. Uh, which needs to come back because Seriously. that is the best of all the commercials. And, oh, and the amount of time around the studio yeah. that we say, oh, I mean, the entire deucers, all three of them were audibly laughing, Mike. Uh, I just wonder, like, you know, Brady's the scariest start he's ever been. Let's put it that way, in That's a long fair. time. That's fair. Did and you finally do it, Andy? I might have done it. Because I tried years ago. Many people have tried and failed to call the end of Tom Brady's career. But on the, our bold predictions show – in Phoenix this season, you said this is this is going to be Tom Brady as as uh, yeah. Done. I mean, I think you have these structures around him that stabilize and guarantee. Like Bruce Arians, you know, you know what he brings to the table. Rob Gronkowski, some stabilizing presence. I don't know. Like they can totally win with just Leonard Fournette this week if they want to. Carolina is not going to score ten points. So. Yeah, that's the hard part. Is is like is Brady vicious enough to go out there and score thirty five? Yes, because Carolina's a pretty. I mean, they've got a good pass rush. They're they, an okay defense. They do, but Tom Brady. You guys both. You both rode or yeah, no? Yes, no. I. I am. I'm the. I stand alone here. I'm riding with Tom Brady. He lost to the Pittsburgh Steelers last week. Mm -hmm. uh, this feels like a game where if Tom Brady can pour it on, he will do so. What's the line, Kyle? Tampa Bay minus 11. <laughs> yeah, it could be 11 to 1. Yeah. Figure that one out. <laughs> All right, that was Ride or Die presented by Chevy Silverado. Learn more about Chevy Silverado at Chevy.com.
News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Were you trying to figure out how they could get one point, Mike? Yeah, they're going to start with an yep. extra point. Yep. No, we're not kicking a field goal here. <laughs> uh, we want one. After they saw what Dustin Hopkins did courageously in that game, they're going to start every team with one kick. They should really change. Like I, I would be pro if it was <laughs> oh like inside the 20, you know, it's, it's, a, it's worth one. 20 to 40, Ooh. it's worth two. You know, oh a field my goal gosh. is worth two. 40 to... 55 uh 55! that's a that's a f normal field goal over 55 maybe we go four no let's just change the shape of the football too like that's make it like 140 Andy. yard field super narrow though it'd be fun uh russell wilson considered day-to-day -day following an mri on his hamstring he, uh rap sheet said it's a real injury he's in real pain but he's pushing to play <laughs> Other guys would not play, but Russell's taking the uh, Mac Unlimited. Jones. Limited. Mac it's, Jones approach. Guys, it's a real injury. Here, there, that uh, there, has to be reported. There are there is speculation out in the world clearly that it's a fake injury. So Rappaport is letting people know it is a real injury with real pain. Can you, I report that stuff on other injuries? Absolutely. What how, what are you hearing about Michael Thomas? Real injury for uh, wow. Yeah. Um, I will say this to, I, I, I don't, I don't want to, uh, you know, mock it too much because no, we're mocking the report. No, I know. That's what I'm saying. I don't want to mock the report oh, too I much do. because I do think there is rationale for it. Russell Wilson plays through everything. He plays when he absolutely should not play, um, as seen by this entire season. But, uh, yeah, that's currently every game. <laughs> right. But remember moon boots. Do you guys remember the Moon Boots version of Russell Wilson? The moon Boots. What was he, the Moon Boots? He rolled both ankles. Oh, he, yes. He had his ankles he, taped up. He looked like a mummy. Yes, he just had his, his feet mummified and wrapped, and he could barely move, but he's like, I refuse to let a backup play. And so I think they're saying, like, look, they had the MRI, yeah. and he should not play, but Russell's not going to allow that to happen. Well, he hit the waiver wire in our league of record today. I doubt he's picked up. I really if you if you pick him up, that's on you. I, I'll pick him up to drop him. Oh, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Like I'll pick him up and then let him go. I look, I'm sure Broncos fans are sitting back saying, look, wh wh where would this team be right now if we had Bailey Zappi? You know, they could be at the top of the division. I <laughs> so their defense, the, the they're playing the Jets. Is that that's my memory on the matchup? Yes. Uh, someone vet that. Yes. Thank you. Um, that is a real matchup. <laughs> yeah, the defense for the Jets is one where I have looked at picking them up and playing them. <laughs> Sorry, Mike. What are you laughing I at? Tried <laughs> I tried to power through. I tried to What happened? I was, I was really glad the camera wasn't on me. <laughs> oh, but, took, uh, but Jason uh, saw it. I, I, what uh, happened? I'm drinking a tea this morning. Yeah. And I went for a sip, and apparently uh, my, the sip was on the place where the uh, the tea string was. <laughs> And then when I removed the cup, I almost yanked the entire tea bag out. Okay. And it was right. so funny looking. I'm so sad the and camera it really wasn't on. It caught that. me off guard. Did was, you almost eat the tea bag? That's no, what it I, looked like from my It looked to me like he was about to drink and then, whoa, what's this tea bag doing in my tea? It startled me. Oh, I don't remember what I was you saying. You were talking about the Jets defense against Denver. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, so I have been <laughs> contemplating picking up the Jets and playing against Denver. And I'm not joking. I'm not making like a, a, a hyperbolic, uh, you know, comedic comment when I thought I am worried if they go to the backup. Like if, if Russ plays through this injury, I am more confident in the Jets defense than if they were to bring in a healthy quarterback not named Russell Wilson because they have to be able to do more than Russ has been doing. They are dead last in points scored, I believe. So, yeah, they they're they got a problem, and we haven't talked yeah. about like Cortland Sutton. Like, he had a horrible week last week. Sure. Um, you thought that he was being freed? Yeah, we did. And something's very wrong with Russ right now. It's real. Uh the Devontae Adams situation. What's the latest? So that will it it's assault charges a misdemeanor has been uh, filed against him so that moves the penalty into a personal conduct policy so you wait for everything to play out he's not going to 
be suspended this year likely. Somebody found a video of him in Green Bay knocking over a photographer and on pick, accident. And, and then he picking him up. Picked him up, put his yeah. hat back on. Yeah, that because that was that was Devontae Adams who won football games. Ah. Yeah. yeah, losing losing hurts. Also, that's kind of like Raider Nation, you know, now oh. that he's he's got to play the part. Well, Sin City. Yeah, you know? I mean, yeah, this is this is new hardcore Devontae Adams. <laughs> hardcore. Um Mike McDaniel doesn't expect Jalen Waddle to practice today. He's optimistic he can play against the Steelers. Something to monitor. Pat Fryermuth. The Muth will be Luth again on Sunday night, at least according to Adam Schefter. Expected to be cleared from the concussion protocol. Okay. We also have Chargers updates. Maybe another injury uh, situation that's going to be remedied. Uh, Brandon Staley told reporters... Keenan Allen expected to return to full practices this week. If he returns to full practices, he'll play this week against Seattle, which is a good matchup. Mm -hmm. And uh, Joshua Kelly will miss weeks, not days, with a sprained MCL. Okay, that explains some things. So yes, Sony. We, we saw Sony on the field and Joshua Kelly gone. We, uh, I think we all missed the injury, but he's gone for a while. And that just means more Austin Eckler. There you go. Uh, breaking news, Latavius Murray went for 31 fab in our league of record just now. Interesting. Yeah. So that's a lot. Uh, that's a lot of fab, but he might be the starter the rest of the year. He might be, or he might not be. That's another story. They, they basically, uh, Nathaniel Hackett dodged the question yesterday in as many ways as he could about not having a lot of plays in the second half and, yep. you know. You knew it was over when Melvin Gordon was helmetless on the sideline. I don't think it was a complete dodge in the sense that there there existed a world where Hackett could have come out and said, look, we've we've had some problems with Melvin Gordon for this reason or that, you know, the fumbles, and it was at the end of the game, and we wanted to protect it or, you know, whatever, and, and really establish it. By him dodging, and, you know, he basically said there was nothing against, nothing that Melvin Gordon has specifically done wrong – to say that this bench will be a for the rest of the season benching. So I, I do think it's going to be a timeshare going forward. Yeah, I mean, team, they never come out and say that stuff. I mean, they didn't say – Sean McVay didn't come out and say that stuff, and Cam Akers are never playing another down. Sure. Uh, but, I mean, if you read more of the quote, he, he said that it wasn't against Melvin Gordon. Mac Jones currently 85 to 90%. Other, so other guys would be at 50% right now. It's up in the air whether he plays Monday night. Pats are two and zero with zap zap zap. I you got to keep Zappy out there. I mean, this is a Dallas Cowboys situation where if you're winning ball games mm -hmm. with the backup, don't break it. And, you know, don't fix it until it's broken. Um, get your W's while your quarterback gets healthy, and it played out very well for the Cowboys. I know they obviously lost their last game, but that just gave more time for Dak to come back, and now he's coming back to a winning team that looks to be in a great position, and he got to heal up. They're playing Chicago on Monday night. They are favored by eight. I mean, this game. How many the, the, sacks the Bears, does, does Justin Fields take in this game? I, I'm going to start the line at three and a half. I'll take the over. I'll take the over. Okay. Yeah. That, but the, my point was going to be. That this, might just be Michael Parsons by himself. This feels. No, no. The Patriots, not the Cowboys. Oh, I thought you said. Uh, gotcha. No, no. I'm, we're back. Sorry. I switched yeah, back to, yeah, the, yeah. to Zappy. Of, this feels like a game the Patriots can win with defense and just just run the ball every single snap, and you can probably still win. All right, real quick here. Taylor Heineke will start against the Packers for the Commanders. Uh, Which, honestly, I don't think that's – I think that's better news for Terry McLaurin in particular because Heineke is willing to chuck WTC. Yeah, yeah. It, the, it's interesting. It's, it's an interesting move here by the Manders of – where was Sam Howell drafted? Third round? Am I remembering that right? He could get time. I mean, uh, he could get an opportunity. But what's interesting of this team, you know, yeah, I guess it's the coaching staff saying we are we're still in, we're still trying to win despite you know being in a division of of teams that are having great success. But to go or how was a fifth rounder? Thank you. Uh, to go to Heineke when he was the guy that you you already had, and you could have kept rolling with him, but you invested heavily in Carson Wentz because Heineke wasn't good enough. And then not seeing what Sam Howell could do in a year where you're, it feels lost already. So it's, it's an interesting situation. And then uh, what was this report about Matt Eberflus? They're just saying that they're going to 
ride the hot hand at the running back position. Speaking to David Montgomery, Khalil Herbert, uh, I mean, David Montgomery more likely to get the hot hand. The snaps and everything have been in his favor. But it maybe it's it, not it, something you want to hear. Yeah, it's definitely not something you want to hear if Montgomery's on your team. But if it, if Montgomery's not on your team and you're trying to trade for him, this is exactly what I'm trying to make my opponent see. And Deshaun Jackson's back. Yeah, to the practice squad for the Ravens. All right, uh, Rashad Bateman also the foot injury. They're expecting him back this week, but we need to monitor practice reports because if he doesn't practice. We could go another week of thinking he's going to play. Did, did you see his tweet uh, about forty minutes after the signing? We don't know. We don't know what it. You know, it's is a little. It was just Who's LOL. Uh, Rashad Bateman tweeted LOL about forty minutes after they signed Deshaun Jackson. Could be unrelated. Maybe he heard a funny wait, joke. Wait, wait, wait. That's the whole. There's no quote the, tweet. It's no, just LOL. He just, he just tweeted LOL. That was it. Which again, funny joke. Uh, that and tweet out LOL. But that's. <laughs> really weird yeah th i mean i think that there's worry i mean we always see this what? when transactions happen it usually is a bad indicator of the health of the other players at the position all right that was today's news and notes presented by usaa insurance learn more at usaa.com slash insurance Let's take a quick break and get back with the thursday night preview All right, we have a Thursday night football game we get the privilege of talking about, and uh, I'll have to catch you up on Mike's Taysom Hill adventure. Thursday night breakdown. The New Orleans Saints at 2-4 and four take on the 2-4 and four Arizona Cardinals. The DraftKings Sportsbook line is Arizona minus two. The over-under is 44. The Cardinals haven't won a game at home in a century. <laughs> Almost a full year. So uh, Arizona is favored here at home. There are injuries on the New Orleans side of the football. There have been all year. And even without them at the quarterback position, it's been rough, right? Uh, Jameis Winston, not a great start to the year, other unless you like what he does for Chris Olave, which is to just – he's much more willing to throw the ball as far as he can down the sideline. There are many who prefer that. I, I agree. One in 12. Yeah, if you have Chris Olave, I prefer that for yeah. sure. But the team has seemed better with Dalton uh, on the field. Very close game last week. They lost it in the end. But it's going to be interesting to see what they do with Winston and Dalton rest of season. I could see them ping-ponging between them based on – just how they're playing. Mike gets the privilege of playing against Taysom Hill again this week because I traded him to the yeah. team playing Mike. Yes, it will be. We'll give it another try. It's it's interesting. Taysom Hill, just the overall tight end play against the Cardinals because they are 31st currently against fantasy tight ends. But, but he's not a tight Taysom end. Taysom is not a traditional tight end, at least, you know, the way that he plays on the football, the way that he's scoring fantasy football points. So, uh, hooray! I get to play against Taysom Hill again. I mean, that's it's it's the lottery wheel of all or nothing. I think I would. I'm fine with it. Is this a trap game for the wide receiver core, or should I say, Chris Olave for the Saints? The Cardinals are uh, good fourth in schedule adjusted points given up to wide receivers, sixth in total points given up. Uh, Byron Murphy has been a shutdown corner against the number one, and there aren't other options Michael Thomas Jarvis Landry I don't expect them to be out there on Thursday have you guys heard anything else no it doesn't seem uh, that they're going to be that that's my expectation is that they won't be when they had the kind of walk through they put on DMPs on their projected outlook so given that this is a Thursday night football game I think the Cardinals are going to be not too worried about the Traquan Smiths of the world uh, across, Marquez Callaway yeah uh, uh, you know this is a shutdown Chris Olave try to shut down Alvin Kamara and Taysom Hill situation. We we talked in the beginning of this episode how injured the Saints team is. Uh, the, the, you know, the, the betting money has gone towards the Arizona Cardinals here, even though they are dealing with their own uh, injury with Hollywood Brown. They're getting Hopkins back. I, I think this could be a trap for Chris Olave. Uh, Interesting. The uh, deep league only, but I, 
I honestly do believe, I think Juwan Johnson, their tight end, is a deep, sneaky play this week. Adam Troutman, their other pass-catching tight end, was starting to kind of rise up in snaps and, and, and routes and everything. Had a really strange, he was in motion pre-snap and just went down. Now, it would, turned out to be an ankle, came back in the game, but he's also getting the do not pra- or did not practice tag. And with the the Cardinals, the way that they're playing against tight ends right now, like last week after, you know, Troutman banged up, four for 41, which you're not, you know, you're not writing home about, oh, I got four for 41 out of my tight end. But I think that that's the kind of floor that you're looking at. Yeah, maybe a, maybe a DFS play because if sure. you look at who the Cardinals have played, they have, you know, they gave up uh, 11.3 fantasy points to the tight end position last week against Seattle in a game where Seattle didn't even score much the week prior, Dallas Goddard destroyed them. Uh, they started off the season, obviously, with the big Travis Kelsey game, the Darren Waller game, Higby. Uh, everyone yep. they've played against has has done well at the tight end position. And obviously, Taysom Hill, you said it earlier, yep. he does not play tight end. You can't look at <laughs> you can't look at his tight end matchup. You got to look more like how does this team guard running backs? Well, yeah, and they didn't have the goal line opportunities for him last week that they had in the previous week. I think I think Taysom Hill is, you know, he's the dart throw that he's been. You have a shot at a big game. They don't have Thomas and Landry. Kamara, 29 and 28 opportunities the last two weeks, no touchdowns. And we don't have any declaration on who the starting quarterback is yet. Yeah, but Kamara is Kamara's back. I mean, his the opportunity is skyrocketing. His efficiency, he's looked good on the field. And the targets are still there. Kyler Murray. <sighs> Uh, well, Hopkins is back. Robbie. <laughs> Robbie. And Robbie Anderson. I think <laughs> the new Call of Duty comes out this week. Oh, oh gosh. no. I got to move them down. Those come out like every week. Modern Warfare 2. Is this a real thing? Yeah. Oh, so, crap. Yeah. <laughs> Kyler right now is my... Uh, he's in line at Walmart? <laughs> he's, uh, he's got a guy that he gives someone <laughs> an advanced copy. Uh, Kyler right now is my quarterback eighth. I would start uh, Tom Brady over him. Um, well, breaking news. It's November 10th. We're all right. Oh, we're all right. Oh, okay. thank, thank goodness. goodness. I'm moving them up. Were you I just checking start... to see if it was actually November 10th? Yeah. On your watch? No, I was. No, not to see if it was November 10th, but what day it was. Gotcha. Then I remember we're in October. <laughs> Kyler had the second lowest <laughs> fantasy points over the last 15 years for a quarterback with 100 plus rushing yards last week. Yeah, it was it was putrid. And and the Saints strength is their defense. This is going to be, I think, another disappointing primetime game. They have been bad against wide receivers, though. Really bad. Schedule adjusted included. Basically so, the worst in the league. So, uh, you know, the the big question here, people have been holding on to Hopkins, waiting. Oh, yeah, he's right in. Yeah, just, yes. uh, that's, I completely agree. Hopkins is uh, someone that should just be played over almost, I, I would say, most every option out there. I would play him over Cortland Sutton, yep. who's been good. Over, over Ty- Olave in the same matchup? Over Olave, absolutely. Over Tyler Lockett, who's been good, but had that weird hamstring pop up on Thursday and then disappeared this last week. Hopkins is pretty much a top 10 wide receiver. Rondale Moore? Yeah, I mean, it's... Flexworthy? A- absolutely. Those Wandale two. or Rondale? One Rondale. Uh, boop, look, Wandale is, boop. Wandale is, is <laughs> nice. <laughs> did you malfunction? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Wandale is very. Give him oil. He needs very, oil. Very exciting. But he was he was still barely on the field. We need some time before Wandale or before you can have the confidence that Wandale is a seventy plus percent. Snap Rondale player. or Brandon Cooks against the Las Vegas Raiders. Brandon Cooks. Brandon Cooks. Okay. Zach Ertz. Start him. Yep. yep. Eno Benjamin. Okay, that's a fair discussion. Connor and Daryl Williams didn't practice. Eno should be the primary back in this matchup, but the Saints have been uh, top third against running back. Yeah, the Eno, the, the last week against the Seahawks, Eno not performing, and now against the Saints, it, it is a scary proposition. Let me throw out some names for you here. Eno Benjamin against the Saints or... Tony Pollard against the Detroit Lions. That's funny. They're very close. In, I'll play Eno. They're very close in my rankings. I'm going to go Pollard there for the Lions massacre that's going to happen. Eno Benjamin or the now what feels like a scary start, Jeff Wilson against the Kansas City Chiefs. I'll try Wilson on for size. Yeah. Uh, what about Brian Robinson Jr. or Eno? 
I've got Brian Robinson two spots Ooh, ahead. Though, here's here's the name that is the 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 biggest question for me. Kenyon Drake, great matchup against Cleveland, or Eno Benjamin. Eno. I would go Eno. I have Eno one and, spot ahead right now. Of but. course, unless there's some weird news throughout the week. Ranking starts at tool. All the resources, the strength of schedule with schedule adjusted, uh, available on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Let's do some mailbag. 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 Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. We got to watch the Cardinals on Thursday night, prime time, Mike. Yeah. Boy, I wonder, you know, I, I know. I know. All people, will suffer. People have wanted us to do another live Thursday night. And we, I'm sure we will at some point. But man, can you imagine this week? No, the wrath that we would, yeah, we would be getting some stuff out. Yeah, this would in be, the world because we already it would are, be a therapy session on Thursday night. That's what it's going to be, whether it's broadcast or not. We're just going to be watching this TV. <laughs> We're going to get tagged so much on Thursday. Oh man, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. Is there anything the Cardinals could do on Thursday to change the story? No. Because they can't. like if they won thirty five to three. That oh, absolutely! Yeah, I mean, if they come out and dominate, if they come out and look like the high powered offense with DeAndre Hopkins and they put up thirty points, then yeah, the narrative will start changing. I'm saying they cannot do that. They are not capable. What if, what I, if they? But but what if they do? Because they were a top offense last year with Hopkins. What if they do that? Is that an indictment on everybody? Because Hopkins fixes every problem immediately, like. It will be 100% attributed to DeAndre Hopkins' return if they succeed. You're, yeah, that's correct. So is it like, you know, what does that mean? Because he's, he's, he, they were 7-0 and 0 last year before Hopkins went down. Yeah, they, they, they've lost a lot of important pieces from that uh, time. You know, they, they had one of the best pass rushers in the league last year when they were going 7-0. and 0. So uh, the, to, to me, the Arizona Cardinals' offensive line is a massive problem. They just lost Pew. Hudson uh, didn't play the past two weeks. Yeah, so Kyler, when he does not have protection, has just been awful. Any throws down the field have been worthless throwaways. So we'll see what Hopkins can do. I do think Hopkins comes into this game and gets well north of 10 targets. This is going to be a snap-the-ball throw to Hopkins type of offense because the defense has a great pass rush. They're going to be in Kyler's face all day long. Yeah, I like that the Cardinals started last week trying to run Kyler. I mean, he ran for 100 yards. That has been a recipe for success. I think they're like 23 and 8 when he runs uh, more than a certain amount of time. Yeah, like so six plus times. So, I, you know, it'll be interesting to watch. I think players, there are quarterbacks in this weird tier of they aren't what we thought they were right now. Russ has been dropped. Oh, yeah. Kyler, not what we thought he was. Herbert, not what we thought he was so far. He's about to be. Herbert? The, the, Herbert is a Keenan Allen problem. That's my true belief. I think Keenan Allen coming back this week, Herbert's going to be fine. So, then so, so Kyler is a Hopkins a, yeah. problem. Well, but he, sure, except for the fact that he then lost Hollywood. The The expectation coming into this year was he's going to get... But he gained full, Robbie. He's, <laughs> Robbie. <laughs> um, I don't think that's a huge upgrade. We'll see. We'll see. You don't think Over Hopkins is a huge upgrade? No, I don't Robbie. think Robbie Anderson oh. <laughs> is a huge upgrade after losing Hollywood Brown. All right. Um, okay. Well, Thursday night's going to be fun. Also, something to monitor for Kyler. He is currently on pace now, thanks to that 100-yard game. He is on pace for 660 rushing yards. I will remind everyone, 650 rushing yards, I believe, is the marker for his season total in his contract where he gets like another million dollars if he rushes for 650-plus uh, rushing. So when we get towards the end of the year, you know, just uh, something yeah, to monitor. No, that's good. It's too bad they didn't write f gaining a first down on the rush yeah. as a little bonus. Maybe you get some in-game currency. All right, uh, voicemail question. Bonjour, ballers. from this Atlanta-based Canadian. So what are your thoughts on the reason for the dip in fantasy scoring this year? think it'll continue. And does it alter your strategy? Thanks for what you do, guys. So what, question what do we about the yeah. defense, uh, why, why are points down? Part of it is red zone struggles. Pe teams are getting in the red zone, and you think these drives are going to be finished, and they're not. Yeah, and it's just the defense is figuring things out. I mean, look at the 
what happened to you know like the Kansas City Chiefs and the Buffalo Bills to a point it happened to them last year if you recall there was this stretch where people are willing to try different defenses and then they are they're very successful uh, uh against certain quarterbacks and certain schemes you're like oh well, we should be more willing to be flexible about what what kind of uh system that we're actually running i also think it's it, i don't think it's league wide necessarily I, I think it's hyper targeted at some of these great offenses who are who are, are bad specific to quarterbacks you've got aaron Rodgers and tom brady who usually put up so many points every week sure. who are not scoring, uh, you know, ba barely getting touchdowns. Russell Wilson, I mean, he's never seen a touchdown. And then the Arizona Cardinals have gone from a high-powered offense to – so you got to look specifically at Cowboys those situations. Well. Yeah, losing Dak and say, will Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, Dak Prescott, will they get it together offensively and throw Kyler in that mix? I will not throw Russ. Russ will not get it together. Um, and I, and I, I tend to – Herbert. Yeah, and I, I tend to trust those quarterbacks. So I'm I'm going to say that the points will come back around. Hey, Ballers, just had a quick question for you. Is it safe to drop Kenny Galladay from my dynasty roster? Uh, I'm holding out hope, but uh, I think it's all lost. Thanks. Have a good one. Love the show. Can you drop Kenny Galladay? <laughs> hey. Um. It, it redraft, of course, but dynasty. It's just it's such a in hard dynasty. Thing. You're deciding between keeping Kenny Galladay in your roster or signing Marquez Callaway, right? Um, you know, would you rather have Marvin Jones or or Kenny Galladay? Marvin Jones. Yeah, one of them can score fantasy points. I, I Kenny Galladay's career is over. Kenny Galladay's career Probably. is basically over. Yes. Now, he's he's 28 years old right now. He has a contract that is so bloated, he can't be traded for, and if they cut him, they're going to have so much dead cap. I, I still think they might just swallow that and say, you know, I mean, we've seen it with a couple of teams. Uh, the Rams say, uh, you know, I'll cut you Todd Gurley even though you've got 20-plus million in dead cap. That might happen to Kenny Galladay, and in that situation, maybe he's signed by another team and given an opportunity, but I don't think he will succeed with that opportunity. So to me, he's a player that you're probably going to – there's there, you know, there's probably not someone on your waivers right now that you really need to pick up. If there is, if you know Kenyon Drake was out there, Latavius Murray was out there, and you're like, oh, should I drop Kenny Galladay? Absolutely, if there's a player on waivers in Dynasty. Otherwise, you'll probably be dropping him when you draft rookies next year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he he stinks. Yeah, and when you when you're like, hey, give me an opportunity. I think it's going up against Richie James and David Sills. I think that's the opportunity that he should be able to take advantage of. So he is he's gone away. And um, Instagram question from uh, Joe Lynn eighty four: Can we trust Allen Robinson now? No, mm -mm. five for sixty three and a touchdown last week. Trust him? No. Um, you're on the bye week here for the Rams. Uh, I, I do believe part of Allen Robinson's success last week was the Higby injury and Higby, I mean, really, really being held in as a blocker this past week. Uh, hopefully, like I'm, I'm hoping that Allen Robinson is trustworthy, but after just one game, no. Yeah, the, the tough part about Higby and why I, I struggled to believe the early part of the year was Higby's never the plan. Higby is the break glass you know they don't go into the game wanting to have to dump off and have him running wild and they want these receivers to do something and whether it's Odell Beckham who you know the reports have said that they have not made their final offer to him or somebody else like they want to get a wide receiver going here yeah if you look at you know his his routes run his snap percentage even his targets nothing has really changed that much for him he's been on the field he's been doing this every game and his targets going back to week two is five five six five six that that was this last week he's been getting the same amount of targets just hasn't been connecting so there he's is a touchdown gamble that's what you're trying for yeah, sure. yeah which is agree. gonna be the fate and just to be clear they'll run a fade on yes. the goal line if he catches it you didn't have a horrible week and if he doesn't you probably had a horrible week yeah they're on by so maybe they work something out maybe they go okay this is time where we can figure out how to utilize the skill set that he has so I, I you know he's not he's not dead but he's certainly not someone that i think we could just flat out rely upon yet it was at least nice to see if you need to fill in a bye week in coming weeks and you can pray that it works out. 
Trust issues from the Foot Clan today. Instagram question, can I trust Jeff Wilson Jr.? Yeah. So, <laughs> like, they, the plan against the Kansas City If Chiefs. that was the answer to can I trust this bridge that I'm walking across, <laughs> how would I feel about that first step, Mike? Uh, not great. I mean, if we're referring to infrastructure here, then, yeah, that I would want more of a yes. But – the the plan against the Kansas City Chiefs for the 49ers has to be hold the ball the and and defense because you can't get into it you can't get Jimmy Garoppolo into a shootout with Patrick Mahomes. So the plan will still be to go to Jeff Wilson. Can they execute on the plan? That's the question. Yeah, I mean, you expect them to get down to the Kansas City Chiefs though, and and all great expect, plans. Expect, but they they may not. No, for sure. I mean, obviously, last week we expected them to be up on Atlanta, and the NFL's been crazy this year with underdogs uh, showing up strong. This week it's going to be in San Francisco. I, I feel like you could still start Jeff Wilson because he is the clear first guy. Last week they abandoned the run because they were down two scores to right. Atlanta, and they tried to pass their way back in the game. You could see that happen again. That's why Jeff Wilson is someone that – I think is more of a flex option this week, but I would, you know, we're talking about the Eno Benjamins. I would start uh, Jeff Wilson over over that caliber of running back. Instagram question: Will Russell, or I'm sorry, will Rashad Bateman be the hero we need? Not I, this week. <laughs> it, not this week, but it is certainly possible. You you open up the the strength of schedule. You go adjust by, uh, you know, you go schedule adjusted. Number two. The, the second softest schedule for fantasy wide receivers through the remainder of the season is the Baltimore Ravens. So if he has healthy and he comes back, I do think he can be that guy. They, John they, Harbaugh two days ago said he was optimistic about him returning this week. Specifically, he said, um, when, when asked, he said, he's close. He's really close. And I know I say that every week, but I mean it. He is really, really close. So he, he could come back this week and – Hopefully they are utilizing the time to get him fully healthy, not rush him back, because they need him. Over the course of the season, I think Rashad Bateman will be the hero we need. He looked great. Here's a here's a fun uh, statoid. He has missed the last two and a half games of their six on the season. Mm -hmm. So not not half the season yet, but almost. He is number two in receiving yards on this team. Yeah, that makes sense. They need him. And it – we're we're about halfway through, so this I honestly this is where I'm starting to take a little peek at the playoffs. Stuff can certainly have a massive change between now and then. But 15, 16, 17, the Baltimore Ravens will play the Cleveland Browns, the Atlanta Falcons, and the Pittsburgh Steelers. All right, a couple of reminders for you out there. Spotify Live will be in the party room today. Yeah, join us. 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern, and then tomorrow we'll be getting into the matchups, the starts of the week, the boom, boom kicker, the never not working. Big show tomorrow. Make sure you join us. Until then, I bid you farewell, you beautiful people. Yes. You're looking good, everybody. Have a fantastic day. We'll see you tomorrow. Careful yeah. with that tea, Mike. I will. See you on the party room tonight. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.